who used to be a member of this church. Uh, Jim, I'm going to hand over to you now, but it's great to have you with us this morning. It's great to be here, even if it is virtually. Can you all hear me okay? All good? G nod your head, Jill. <laughs> we can hear you. Great stuff. Well, it is fabulous to be with you, um, even if it is only virtually. Uh, it's actually nearly two years since the last time that Christina and I were with you, Kendall Road. Um, unfortunately, Chris can't be with me uh, because she hosts our weekly gathering here, but she sends her greetings to you all. Um, we want to thank you too for your presence, um, for our ministry, also for Christine's health. Uh, she struggled, as you know, with a um, shoulder issue and um, uh, are you, um, am I breaking up or is... Uh... Jim, I wonder if it would help if you stopped your, your video because the signal seems to really be breaking up. Okay. And that usually um, helps. Let me just uh, tell Christine um, that that's been the problem. I will do that, but uh, I'm just going to tell Christine in a second. Hold on. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you could do that, darling, that'd be good. Um, so Christine's actually going to shift the hosting to somebody else so that she can do that and let's see whether this improves at all okay um uh so thank you for your prayers for us uh, uh for our family too grace alex and rosie we haven't seen them since uh last summer and that's been tough and our hope is that we'll get the vaccine soon and we can be able to see our family again which would be great of course so enough of, uh, enough of us, let's turn to John chapter one. Um, today you're starting a new sermon series and uh, I made a point of nabbing the first slot, not just because uh, that way I don't have to worry about what anybody else has said already, but because it's an amazing passage. So I'd like to read that now. Let's read that together. John chapter one, verses one to 18. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was with God in the beginning through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made in him was life and that life was the light of men the light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it there came a man who was sent from God his name was John he came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him We've lost you, Jim. He came as his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we've all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. How was that? Was that better uh, breaking up? Was it okay? Should I turn the camera off? I think you probably need to turn the camera off. It did drop okay. a little bit. That's fine. Eighty years ago, on this very day, the 9th of May, 1941, 
Three British destroyers engaged and seriously damaged a German submarine, U-110, just south of Iceland. The German crew tried to scupper the submarine, but before it sank, British forces from HMS Bulldog managed to retrieve a highly secret cipher machine for decoding German naval messages that was known to the Allies as Enigma. The U-boat sank, but the Allies managed to keep their capture of Enigma a secret. The machine and the code books which accompanied it were taken to Bletchley Park, where Alan Turing and a host of others worked tirelessly over the next few years to break the code, successfully deciphering naval messages, and it's estimated shortening World War II by between two and four years. Now, I guess located where it is, Kendall Road Baptist Church, that some of you may be particularly familiar with that story, but it actually serves as a perfect illustration for today's message because just as the Enigma machine enabled the Allies to decode the meaning of German naval messages during World War II, John chapter one enables us to decode the meaning of life itself. And the code name that's revealed to us, the one who can help each and every one of us to crack the code of life is revealed, one might even say enigmatically, as the word. Now, one of the features of decoding Enigma was to know the starting positions of each of the rotors on the device. The early versions of Enigma had three rotor wheels with 26 positions for the letters of the alphabet on each wheel. If you didn't know those three starting positions, you couldn't even begin to decipher the messages. And in the same way, John 1 doesn't just reveal the identity of the word, it gives us the starting positions to help us to understand life. Not just life, life, the universe, and everything. So the title I've put to today's sermon is simply, Start Here. John's gospel starts at the beginning, not of Jesus's life, but of life itself. Of course, John doesn't reveal that his subject is Jesus quite yet. He uses a, co a code name, the word, and I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. But for now, it's important not to miss the emphasis that John gives in those first two verses. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The word was there at the very beginning. The word was in on it from the very beginning. We just can't read this without thinking of the first verse of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John wants us to make that association. The other gospels start with John the Baptist or with a genealogy. But John the Evangelist starts at the very beginning because the word was with God in the beginning. And although the code name of the word sounds impersonal, this is no Star Wars trust in the force, Luke, nor is it the government's COVID strategy, follow the science, Boris. The word is a person, not an it. He was with God in the beginning. And then John drives it home in verses three and four. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Life, all life, starts here with the word who was with God in the beginning and through whom all things were made. Life itself was in him. Life starts here. That's the first point. Life starts here for all of us. If you're alive, if you're still awake, your story starts here with the word. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist, a Muslim, a Jew, or what they're now calling nuns, people who are frankly indifferent about religious things. It doesn't matter. If you're alive, the light of your life was given to you by the word, says John. Life starts here. But secondly, the Christian story also starts here. 
as a small child, I had a book of stories. It was a collection of classic fairy tales with some more modern stuff thrown in as well. But like most children, I had my favorite stories, which I read over and over again. Those pages were worn and grubby, but some stories I didn't care for, mostly ones about girls. Those pages were pristine and clean. And some people's Bibles are a bit like that too. We know our way around the Gospels and Paul's letters, but don't ask me to read Obadiah or Ezekiel or anything like that. But what's even worse is that when we, we do exactly the same thing with our concept of the Christian story, we think that the Gospel runs from Christmas to Easter. Well, maybe Pentecost at a push. But the Christian story stretches from creation to new creation. It begins with the creation of the earth and it ends with the creation of a new earth. Yes, of course, the events between the incarnation of Christ and his ascension into heaven are vitally important, but this is not only about one man who lived 2,000 years ago in Israel. It's a story on a global, no, a cosmic scale. That's why all Christians should be environmentalists because the gospel isn't just about saving souls it isn't even just about human beings listen to the way that paul describes jesus in colossians chapter one the son is the image of the invisible god the firstborn over all creation but in him all things were created things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He's the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. But God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. The gospel is about the reconciliation of all things with the one who created them. So mission is not only about pro proclamation, it's also about administration, the custody of the planet and the place where we live. So don't shrink the gospel to Christmas and Easter. The Christian story doesn't start with the birth of Jesus, but with the creative action of the pre-incarnate word who was with God in the beginning. And of course, that's one of the other fundamental tenets of Christianity that's revealed right here in these verses. The word was with God, and the word was God. Okay, Jim, so which is it? Yes. No, 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 no. Was, was he with God or was he God? Well, yes to both. It was actually the source of a lot of the key debates in the early church councils, precisely this issue of the relationship between God and the word, the father and the son. And when they'd more or less got that straight, they then had to work out what to do with the Holy Spirit, ending up with what we know as the Trinity, as a doctrine. But for today, my only point is this. The Christian story starts here at the beginning of time. The fundamental tenet of Christian theology, that the Son was with the Father in the beginning. That starts right here. And for that very reason, we find an echo of John 1 in the first clauses of the Nicene Creed. It begins like this. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. So life starts here, and the Christian story starts here. And thirdly, redemption starts here.
This is the start of the story of life, but it is not a fairy tale. Look at verse five. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Right here at the very beginning, we're confronted with the existence and the power of evil, of darkness in the world. Yes, there is hope, but we first need to recognize that not all is light. Every single human being has been made in the image of God. Every single one of you, no matter how sinful or flawed or weak, you are a bearer of the image of God. But that image has been marred and broken by sin. Sooner or later, we all have to come to the realization that there is darkness in the world and there is darkness too in our own hearts. John tells us though, not just that life starts here and that the Christian story starts here, but redemption, the solution, the salvation of our souls starts here. The story of how the light triumphs over darkness starts right here. That's, of course, what will be revealed in the rest of the gospel and that you'll be hearing about over the coming weeks. But he introduces some of the key themes, even in these verses, things that he'll come back to. It's a bit like the first movement in the symphony where the themes are starting to be introduced. John talks about light, life, truth, being born of God, seeing God's glory, knowing God. All of those things will be developed further in the weeks to come. And we know from the first verses that the light that has come from God is actually a person. And a person is introduced in this first act of the gospel. But John is keen to point out immediately that though, though this man was sent from God, he was not the light. He was just sent to be a witness to the light. He was sent to point to the light that people might believe. And though verses six to eight introduce this character as a man whose name was also John, one we know as John the Baptist, and you're going to hear lots more about him next week or the next sermon in the series anyway, John, the gospel writer, immediately refocuses on the main character of the story, the one who he has called the word and the light. Into the darkness has come the light. He is now in the world, but not everybody recognized or received him. Even those who really should have done so because of what God had already revealed to them as his people in scriptures. Yet to those who did recognize and receive him, those who did believe in him, he gave them the right to become children of God. And then we come to verses 14 to 18, the big reveal, the word, this person who was both God and with God in the beginning, who is the light to the world, who was made flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. God made man, the word made flesh, that we might see his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And finally, the mystery is revealed. Just like that moment when the jumble of letters that were fed into the Enigma machine were finally decrypted and they finally made sense. And in the plain text, the identity of the word of the light is revealed. It's not Moses, it's Jesus. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is the one and only Son who has revealed God to us, the one who is God himself and is in closest relationship with the Father. He's come to bring light into a world of darkness. The Savior, the Redeemer, is revealed to be Jesus. So life starts here. Christianity, the Christian story, starts here. And redemption starts here. But there's one more phrase I want to leave you with this morning. For remarkably, there's another person 
in view in these verses. Not John the evangelist who wrote the gospel. Not John the Baptist who was sent to point to the light. Not even the word or the light of the world himself, the one who's just been revealed to be Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ. The other person in view here is you. But John says, it's not only that life starts here, but your life starts here. Look again from the beginning. The, world, the word is revealed as the one who created all life, your life. He is the one who offers life to mankind and light, light for you, for your darkness. The light is offered to everyone, but not everyone receives. But if they do receive it, if you receive it, it gives you the right to become a child of God. The word became flesh just like you and me. Look at your hands. Jesus had hands like yours. Every miracle that he performed involved his body, his hands, his voice. It tends to be Christmas when we hear Jesus referred to as Emmanuel, God with us. And we can sometimes spiritualize that a bit too much. You know, say, well, God is with me in this situation. Well, yes, he is. But John's point is that the word was made flesh. Now, some of us might have a bit more flesh than we'd like, but the point is the word became fully human, just like you, just like me, because that was the only way that he could redeem you, that he could redeem me. So if you're looking for God, here he is, revealed in Jesus. If you're looking for light in the midst of a dark situation, here he is to shine light into your darkness. If you're looking for meaning in life, here he is, the one who was there at the very beginning, inviting you to see your story as part of his bigger story. Because life starts here. The Christian story starts here. Redemption starts here. And your story starts here. Do you believe that? Because if you do, it throws a completely different light on life, the universe, and everything. As C.S. Lewis famously put it, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen not only because I see, but because of it, I see everything else. Believing what John presents to us here in the gospel of Jesus is what throws light on everything else. It's the enigma machine which enables us to decipher the mystery of life. It is where we start. Now, that's not saying that there are still not things that we, that we don't understand, questions that we want answering, things that happen to us that don't make sense. There is still darkness in the world and in our own lives. But the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it, overcome it because of Jesus. There is light in your darkness, and one day we will know how our story fits into that bigger story because it all starts here. As we sang at the beginning, this is my story. This is my song. We, make, we take on ourselves the song and the story of Jesus, because that's what makes sense of our lives. I want to end with just a little story of a young woman who has joined our mission as a short-termer. And just after she joined, she discovered she had cancer. It's terminal, uh, it's very vigorous, and she has a matter of weeks or months to live. And yet, every time she asks us to pray for her, she prays just that she would finish well. The rest of her life, she wants to give that to the Lord, however many days or weeks it might be, because she understands that the rest of her life starts here. And that's the same for us too. Our life starts here. The Christian story starts right here. Redemption for each and every one of us starts here. Your life starts here. Let's pray. 
Thank you, Lord, for your word, which speaks so powerfully and reorientates and recalibrates our lives. It gives us a, a point, Lord, where we can say, yeah, that's a rock I can hold on to. We thank you, Lord, for being life, for being light in our darkness. And thank you, Lord, that we can come to these words afresh today. Take from them hope for however long we might have, knowing that, Lord, your story and our story are connected because of what you did on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming us. Thank you for giving our lives meaning. Thank you, Lord, for infusing us with new hope because we know, even when we don't understand, that, Lord, you are in control, that you are there at the beginning, you are there at the end, and you invite us to join you and be part of your story. Amen.